Um, the one thing I've noticed with a lot of beginning photographers is how you have to speak to your client. It doesn't matter what flash you have, it doesn't matter if you have customized pieces, it doesn't even matter what camera you have, it simply doesn't. What it all comes down to is how you speak to your client. And if you can't speak to your client right and you can't negotiate with them or you can't communicate with them, then it's just all going to fall through. It's the sad truth and I see it happen all the time and it's even in some cases even happened to me. So with all this, I need to talk to you guys about a few things where you can go ahead and prevent that and you're able to go ahead and grow your business. All right, so the first thing I want to say is how you present yourself. Do not, you know, just wear baggy shorts and, you know, and have, you know, a wrinkly t-shirt, all unshaved, hair all messed up. You have BO and you're just wearing up, you're wearing all these torn up shoes and it's not going to look good if a client will not walk up to you if you're dressed like that. How you dress is going to matter. Trust me, I know you're just like, who cares what people think about you? In this case, you should because that's how the client's going to choose you out of the many others they can see out there. Um, just remember, in your area, no matter what you think, just because you think you're the only photographer or videographer out there, there's always going to be more hidden somewhere um, or p coming up out of nowhere. So you just don't know. So you have to be ready to deal with competition and competitive pricing. So the thing I, you know, have noticed the most is how some people will complain, you know, hey, how come I'm not getting clients? How can I get more clients? It was, well, here's, here's the first thing. You have to speak up. I'm a very anxious guy, trust me. I know it, it sounds weird because I'm speaking to this camera and I'm on YouTube and I can walk up to people just fine. But you have to be able to come up to people and speak to them. Because if you can't speak to them, then, well, you're not going to get clients. Um, when someone walks up to you, you have to be ready to talk to them. When someone wants to get right down to the nitty gritty and get to prices, you have to have a ballpark and an estimation on what they want you to hire for and how many hours and the work power and editing you have to put into to give them the final result that they want. So when it comes to with all of that, you know, there's all these listed things you have to have in order in order for you to get successful enough to get that client to come towards you, lock them in, get that safety deposit and get ready for the schedule when that's coming up. Now, another thing I noticed that a lot of people do wrong is you know, they start talking about their gear more about what they have in their portfolio. They're not going to care about the camera unless they were previously a photographer or they are have a fam family friend that's doing it. They're not going to care. If they see your photos looking really nice, clear, sharp, perfect lighting, perfectly framed subject, it all looks good, or the video is really sharp, nicely edited, perfect color grading, a neat audio, a great compositioning, a start to finish, then the clients didn't come to you. But if videos are sloppy, poorly lit, like the shadow behind me, that's not good. Um, audio is, is choppy, there's jump cuts, uh, the framing's bad, then they're not gonna come to you. But if the photos are perfect, the video's, uh, the video's perfect, and it just looks all around like it's a, r a really rounded out, polished out video, then they'll go ahead and get you. So that's just another thing to consider, you know, have good presentation with your clientele. Don't just hand them just some photos that you have on your camera. Show them the finished final edited result or the finished photo off your camera or the finished video, the best one you have. Don't show them the worst video, show them what the best you got because I guarantee you if you do that, they're going to have high expectations and with those high expectations, you'll put more work and more detail in your video and you'll polish it out and look really nice and the client will really, kind of, the client will be really happy. Also, another last thing, when you're doing photos or you're doing an event, is hiding your emotions. When it comes to a day where if your camera fails or if you break a camera, do not get upset. Um, usually, rule of thumb in photography, if you're doing events and you've been doing it for a while, always have two cameras or three, an extra body on you. This is my backup camera. Whenever this camera over here breaks that you guys are seeing me on, I switch over to that one. If that camera breaks, I switch over to the one that's here. I always have to have a backup on you when you're doing photo because you, there's no excuses when it comes to a job. You can't just break your camera during an event and say, oh, sorry, I can't do it anymore, broke my camera. There's no excuses, you have to have a backup. So with all that, just with that whole part of the whole subject, talking about when equipment breaks and fails, you have to be able to continue to go on and say, this is great, this is good photos, this is a good job. Hey, everything's turned out smoothly, everything's running fine. Don't say, oh no, this isn't working, I don't know if I can do this, I don't know if I can do that. Don't down yourself, don't underestimate yourself when you're on the day on the job. Do your best, tell the client that everything's doing just fine, 
if things are feel like are collapsing around you, keep on pushing through. There's a video I'm gonna put in the description where this guy talks about how 10 tips, 10 tips, um, man, I'm just scattered today, aren't I? Um, how there's many ways where a photographer can mess, can mess up, and it's just a really all you know rounded out video, and so you guys should go look at. They'll be in the description. So when you're at an event, hide your emotions and only show that you're doing just fine. Trust me, the clients will be at relief. They won't have to be worried about you. You don't have to worry about them. You just continue going on and continue finishing your work. And at the end, you review everything. You salvage what you have, or you see how much you have. And if it's all perfect, then you tell the clients all good. If it's all bad then try your best. If it's still bad after you, you cleaned up as much as you could, then you talk to the client and tell them what happened. But if the whole event goes fine after and it was just a hiccup during the event, then don't worry about it. If you want to tell them, then fine. If you want to be transparent with them. But many times the client doesn't even know if you already did the finished work, then the job turned out just right. So that's all you guys. This is Greg from Lexi Productions. Thank you for watching this video. I know I have been gone for such a while now. And you know, it feels great to be back, but I've just been busy with my company. We've been expanding a lot more recently. We're actually been even um, underemployed. So that's what's been happening right now. So that's all you guys. This is Greg from Lexi Productions, and see you on the next one.